Welcome to another episode of Speaking with the Senator. I'm Senator Kevin Avard. And, uh, you know, today we're going to be talking with uh, a candidate, uh, uh, a current alder woman uh, in, from Manchester. But uh, what I want to talk a little bit about is uh, how you get involved, how uh, the, the average person gets involved in politics. And uh, we, we were talking a little bit off stage uh, about that. And uh, so I want to kind of explore that and maybe hopefully encourage you to come and get engaged in, in politics um, because it's for all of us. It's, it's, uh, it's local and everybody's qualified, just about everybody. So with that, I want to introduce Chrissy Cantor. Yes, Chrissy yeah. Cantor. Chris, Chrissy Cantor. And <laughs> thank you. you. Well, thanks for coming. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me on. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And, and uh, you were there and we had you up on the, on the screen as far as our music matters uh, recently at the... Uh, at the Rex Theater in Manchester, and we want to thank you for being part of that, at least recognizing that, that whole uh, thing. And we had the, the Scott Spradling band there. But uh, thank you for being part of that and, and for running. You know, And so uh, you uh, won a special election. Yes, May 9th, May 9th. Um, in Ward 6 in Manchester. Manchester. And, and how did you get involved with that? So you're a hairdresser. I'm a hairdresser. Mm -hmm. I'm a mom, a grandmother, and a small business owner. And a, a former junkyard girl. And a former junkyard girl, yes. Um, my dad owned uh, Jeff Cantor's Car World, so I yeah. just grew up in a small business world. Right. And about giving back to our community mm. and being involved. Um, but I never thought I was ever going to be in politics, ever. So how did you get involved? Um, when I knew that we needed to speak up. And every, every voice matters. Mm -hmm. And so being frustrated that no one was representing me, um, you know, with all the censorship that has been going on, mm. I really woke up in April of 2020. I had locked down my, um, oh, I say locked down, I shut down my business a week before Governor Sununu asked us to because I really believed everything that we were told with media. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you know, April 2020, you start seeing videos and then they're disappearing. And you hear so many doctors talking about, hey, we can um, treat with this, um, treat different things, different ways. And all of a sudden these people were being censored. So I was like, what's going on? Why mm. are people being censored? So that's when I was like, all right, what's going on? So then I started um, getting a little more involved in kind of opening the curtains of, um, I think, everything that's local going issues. on. Local issues. Local right. issues. Yes. Yeah. And, and so when, uh, when you started seeing the light, if you will, yeah. you know, as, as far as whether something's being censored, why aren't we knowing about this? I'm interested. It, it, it stirs up a hunger. You want to know more. Mm -hmm. It's affecting me. It's affecting my business. Yes. Uh, you're seeing Nancy Pelosi going into uh, a hairdressing place. Yes. That, uh, I had a that, problem with that. I, I think a lot of people did, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and But you're required to do such and such a thing. And then, of course, things don't seem to pan out. Now, all of a sudden, the, the requirement for vaccinations and so you get involved a little bit. You want to find out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But I'm just a hairdresser. Exactly. I stand behind the chair. Yeah. And um, I love people and I love making them feel good. But it really are, it's, it's a relationship. And I learn so much from my clients. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of how it kind of started is here I'm standing behind the chair and we're chit-chatting up the storm and talking to lawyers and doctors and other people business owners mm -hmm. and what's an essential worker and things just weren't adding up so i ended up starting my own radio show mm. called chill and heal and my thing was you know because it's hard to talk sometimes it's hard to talk because we're so divided and that's what they want is they want us to be divided right. And really, we need we to connect. We don't know who they are yet. But I don't know who they are. I feel like they're the elite. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> the elite. And I think it's really mm. about communicating and talking about things. You know, it's really interesting. Uh, I, I clean for a living. I mm -hmm. suck up water. I'm in people's homes every day. And I think one of the most uh, enlightening thing is just being out there. I'm not knocking on doors. They're inviting me in. And by the way, as I'm cleaning your toilet or as I'm cleaning your uh, your uh, carpets, mm -hmm. uh, by the way, did you know I'm your senator? And it's like, what? Yeah, we have to work for a living. And and it's like, oh, you know, I wanted to ask you, you know, and all of a sudden they're pouring out their hearts. 
stuff that you're not seeing on TV, and like you said, right. they, the they people, don't realize that we're engaged with the public on a regular basis. You're mm -hmm. hearing from their heart yes. as you're doing their hair. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, if they're not agreeing with you, you can just pull it a little bit. Or <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah. the idea is uh, that's dangerous for the elites because we're talking to the people. Mm -hmm. And when you're hearing that message and, and you're, you're seeing, well, that doesn't seem to add up, mm -hmm. that starts a fire in your heart, doesn't it? It really does. You know, there's never, has there ever been one solution for mm -hmm. something? There's never been one cure for um, one thing. And we're all different. What I'm allergic to might not be what you're allergic to. What right. you're sensitive to, I might not be sensitive to. And so there, I'm like, why is this, don't we go? always ask for, so my dad passed away from prostate cancer. And I jump into this because there's mm. not one cure. Right. And there's so many different, it's about eating healthy. There's all these different- Early detection. Di early detection. Right. Yep. Um, what we put in our body, um, th the different drugs that are available. Um, What's the name of your show? So it's called Chill and Heal. Chill and and Heal. so I took a little um, break because I ran for alderman and so but now I'm going to be starting a little TV show called Chill and Heal. And that'll be uh, in local in access Manchester, in Manchester. Manchester, yeah. Okay. MCTV. And the name of your hair? Uh, is Chill Spa. Chill Spa, of course. Yeah, Chill Spa. We're pretty chill up there. Yeah. We, we love each other. We, we have a great time. We have a great, um, we've been in business 17 years. Did you start it from scratch? I did. You did? Yes. Wow. Well, my daughter does that as well. She, oh. Uh, she took over uh, Susan Brown, I think it is, her a place in Manchester or something. She took that over, but she does hairdressing. It's and my favorite the best. aunt, and I'll say this publicly, my uh, my aunt Camille from Nashua, New Hampshire. Aww. She was a hairdresser. She used to have those buns, the, mm -hmm. the, the honeydew thingy, or whatever. Yes. Oh, That's to, specialty. That was <laughs> yeah. I'm Morlon. I got a free haircut and candy. So, but. Uh, but you're in. You're engaged with people. You're. Yeah. You're. Um, something's happened, right? Mm -hmm. you're, but you know, when you step up to the plate, mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that come your way, and mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes it's easy for people to say, "Well, I don't know if I signed up for this." Uh, yeah, I I was just saying that earlier today to right. myself. I'm like, oh, did I really sign up for this? Or I believe I was called to do this mm -hmm. um, because I have a caring heart and I'm a problem solver. And I really feel like I can look at all sides yeah. and I'm willing to mm -hmm. um, be open and talk about things because right. there's not one solution. It's just, how are we gonna get there? Um, and everyone's different, mm -hmm. um, but it is really, it's, aren't, shouldn't we bring, be bringing joy back? and happiness and, and respect problems. to everyone and solve them, solving problems. Mm -hmm. And I just want to work smarter, um, not harder and bring more happiness. And what's happening in Manchester, I love my city. I grew up there mm -hmm. and it's just really, really sad. We need more law and order. We need, we have a mental health um, crisis, drug addiction oh and it's funny, right? And it's not funny, actually. I, it was yep. when we did the uh, the the play or the the, the event, which was amazing. Yeah, thank amazing because music heals. It does, and it also brings people together. It does. It yeah. brings so much joy. It does. But as we were out in the parking lot, mm -hmm. uh, my, our drummer and I, we, you know, I said, "Hey, Rick, look down. There's a needle." Yeah. There's a needle. It's like. Where'd that come from? You know, and it was uh, it's just in the back street. And so there is an addiction problem. Major. A major, a major one. Yeah, exactly. And, and addiction is a, is a real thing. You know, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. 19 years sober. Yeah. Mm -hmm. December 20th is my will be my 19th year. That's... But, uh, you know, struggling with things. There are there are options. You know, there um, there, there needs to be help there. there rather than exploiting individuals mm -hmm. and saying, oh, we got, we need mental health, we need mental health, let's do mm -hmm. something. Yes. Let's get it done. Take action. Right. I believe in AA. <coughs> I feel like everyone should go to AA. Yeah. Um, it, there, it, it's, uh, there is a li lot of life lessons there. You yeah. Know. The I did a little bit are... of that, but I, it was mm -hmm. uh, more my faith in, in God and in, in, in praying mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. But, um, the thing about Manchester politics right now, being an alderman, it, it's not Democrat, it's not Republican, it's it's nonpartisan. Is that correct? Yeah, they say that. In theory, <laughs> right? In theory. In theory. In theory. In theory. But, and I think it was George Washington who said something to the effect that um, 
you know, don't go with the two party system. Mm -hmm. Go with the people in the individual. But now that we have it, you you, you mm -hmm. kind of have to uh, mm -hmm. sometimes you have to pick sides. But just because you pick sides doesn't mean you have to say, well, you know, you're on the other side. Therefore, I don't like you. Mm -hmm. Right. You need to have that discussion. I totally agree. Yeah. yeah. We need to work together. Yeah. Put everything on the table and talk about it. So what are some of the things that we can we can do in Manchester? Well, we definitely need bail reform, but I know that's at a state level. Yeah. I did go up um, and testify last week about it, which is new to me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not I'm new to politics. Um, uh, Were you so nervous? Yes, I was. I was yeah. not planning on testifying. Was it the House or the Senate that you went to? Or the House. Joint? Okay. Yep. I was not mm. planning on testifying. I wanted to go there and learn. And all of a sudden, I'm like, no, they, they need to hear um, from a concerned citizen, a victim, and an alderman. Mm. Um, and uh, 700 more people, uh, 700 people got rearrested in Manchester um, when they were out on bail. And we are not protecting the victims. We're not protecting our, you know, everyone in our society. And we're not helping the people. Like, really, hmm. we need to help. I know personally someone that um, went to Valley Street. This was years ago. And there was no services at that time. So I'm looking, I want to make sure that there's services and there's wraparound services because people really need help because they don't want to be thieves. They don't want to be out hurting people. But there's so many different from stalking all the way up, there's so many. If if you help people ahead of, in the middle of mm -hmm. the crisis, maybe they won't get to the next levels of the different crimes. Yeah, I think I, I went to one event uh, here in Nashua. It was at the courts where the juvenile courts. Uh, they uh, there's um, a, a way for these kids to to, to get a second chance. Mm. And uh, that's beautiful. It it, it is. Uh, it, they they make you toe a really straight line mm -hmm. um but uh i went to the first first graduation of this this mm -hmm. court thing and uh they didn't have a seat for me for some reason you know uh sent, they didn't have a seat for senator Everett, so i went and sat in the back of the room and just to listen to all the testimony mm -hmm. and, and you know what what the crimes this individual did and and you know what the what the process of, of, of a, a different direction in life and mm -hmm. all the the struggles that you had to do in order to get through the system. And I'm sitting in the back and I'm listening and to my left, there were two gentlemen who were gonna have to go through the system. Mm -hmm. And I hear one of the guys say, man, I'm never gonna make it. That was my opportunity. Well, hey, hey, wait a minute. Yeah, you can, I'm Senator Kevin Avar. You know, and I told them how I struggled with, with uh, addiction. Yeah. With alcohol, mine, mine yeah. was alcohol. Okay, and I said I, you can do this. Uh, I made some mistakes. I made some bad choices, and you know, uh, you can do this. And they looked at me like, "What? R really?" Mm -hmm. It was an opportunity. It was it was fortunate, but there there is hope. It, it, you've just got to be able to um, communicate that, and make sure that you you wrap your arm around somebody instead of judging yes. them. Yes, you've done some really stupid things. Mm -hmm. uh, here's another opportunity. I think there's a uh, another organization out there started out by the feds. Um, it's called. Uh, well, I had them on my show a few years back, but kids, people that had felonies, mm -hmm. uh, second chance or something to that effect, and it helps them. Um, yeah, you, you got a felony. And nobody's going to look at you. They're not going to hire you. So what's the alternative? Yeah. So these people help them uh, get get another start. But you're aware of this. Mm -hmm. This this is interesting, you know, in Valley Street. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that was uh, I don't know, maybe about ten years ago. Okay. So to me, I'm like, I want to be a problem solver. I want to be able to connect people. Mm -hmm. And what's happening in Manchester? There's, you know, the needles on the ground that you were talking about. I don't. I do not believe in enabling mm -hmm. at all. I don't believe in the needle exchange. To me, it's when you give someone a needle, it's one step closer to overdosing one step closer to you yeah, know, I think one of the on. theories behind that was because of the uh, hepatitis C or hepatitis and uh, for each individual that gets hepatitis it's a potential of a hundred thousand uh, dollars that the state has to pony up on which is it's a lot of money mm -hmm. so that was some of the background but I understand uh, are we are we the enablers now you know and uh, and with the with the is it Narcan Narcan? Mm -hmm. Uh, 
I know that the first responders seem to be getting um, fatigued. Oh. Yeah, completely exhausted. Oh, you again. Oh, you again. Oh, mm -hmm. you again. Oh, you again. How many times are you going to mm -hmm. do this? How many times are we going to have to give you the Narcan? Mm -hmm. You know, we want to save your life, but, you know. How people, many times have are... to, people have to help themselves, yes. too. And sometimes they need a, a push in the right direction. Yeah. Um, I'm not, I don't know exactly how to do that. I mean, I know my personal experience, tough love. Um, has worked mm -hmm. um, with a family member, yep. and it, but they're grateful now. And I know a lot of people have saved um, their family members. Intervention. Right? Yeah, intervention. It's my it wife's works. one of her favorite shows. Yeah, Inter she, she's like, well, did they make it? Didn't, didn't they yeah. make it, you know? Yeah, um, so yeah, you're running again. Running again. Yeah, what's the race look like? Um, I'm running against the same person, mm -hmm. Maxine Mosley, and I mean, to me, I'm not going to assume, you know, people are like, oh, it's, it's harder to beat someone that's already in office. I will never assume mm -hmm. and I will door knock. And I guess my thing is I've got to share how I've got to be a little more social with how I've been voting and why so mm -hmm. that people can see. Um, well, you've only had a short amount of time. Though, right, right, but I, I feel like I've, I've voted pretty good because yeah. um, I believe in accountability and transparency. Um, and so, good. yeah. Yeah, so when I drive by, because I drive by your place um, when I go to band practice on Wednesdays, mm -hmm. I, oh, I see all these signs in the yard. And, oh, oh, that's her, okay. Yep. And uh, I also I see Jay Rao. Is it yeah, Jay uh, Rue. Rue, Rue, yes. and he's running for mayor. He's running for mayor. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, it seems to be a, a really close uh, battle. Apparently, he won, and yes. uh, uh, former Senator Kevin Kavanaugh uh, won as well. Yes, uh, but Jay's knocking on doors and the unusual doors. Yes, and he's connecting with people. Yeah, he's talking with people, and that's the big thing: is it's connecting with people and mm -hmm. willing to be able to go. Hey, I believe in transparency. I believe in accountability, and we're going to problem solve and we're going to dig deep. We're not going to just put a band aid on it. Right. Um, so I am definitely supporting Jay, yeah. and I door knocked with. He came and door knocked with me, um, and I was. It was funny because he's door knocking for me, and I was like. Well, no, you got to meet Jay because he's so great. But he was like, no, 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 I'm doing this for you. This oh. is during the special election. Nice. Nice. Um, so he's definitely a team player. Yeah. And we have a lot of great candidates. Yeah, um, I believe he served with my son. My son's in the uh, you know ar army as well. But uh, yeah, he's, he seems uh, very approachable. He's very connected, especially to uh, a lot of uh, individuals who are uh, who have immigrated. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, who want to become citizens as well, who are here on work visas, and uh, mm -hmm. he's helping those people along quite a bit, which is great. Uh, we are getting an influx of illegals, but uh, he's working with those who want to do the process the proper way, and he's been very supportive of that community, apparently. That's excellent. Yeah. Yeah, very. You know, I did a job once on Orange Street. Mm hmm. Uh, oh, yeah. you, you're familiar with Orange yes. Street, and uh, it was a job where uh, someone had about seven German shepherds in a closet. Oh, yeah, and they were on on the third floor, and uh, we had to get a dumpster clean out the whole place. It was it was just uh, it was like a it was really mm -hmm. bad. But uh, I noticed uh, there are a lot of kids. They were playing with tires, mm -hmm. you know, they just just in the neighborhood, and uh, you, you would think there would be some some place for them to play yeah you know uh and a and park you, uh, yeah is there a park there around there um there's a couple parks i'm trying to think that pretty park well it, i think we it, it call was, it pretty it was park, sad it, though yeah. because they they're just you know they're sitting there and they're you know they they, they had a uh, like a jump rope but they had a tire and I, you know when i see kids just just rolling a tire mm -hmm. across up and down the street it's like that's all you got. So when mm -hmm. I got done this job, I went to the dollar store. Yeah. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I was Santa Claus that day. For you know twenty thirty dollars, you can you can mm -hmm. make a whole bunch of kids and we just give out uh, toys. But the area just needs it needs hope somehow. I don't mm -hmm. know what to say about it. I, I was just really sad for some of the kids. They're, they're just uh, I don't know. It, it didn't look like a, a great place for them to grow up. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I do know what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, and uh, so anyway, I, that, I, I don't know why I brought that up, but I, I just... Uh, oh, I definitely think we should be investing in our children mm -hmm. and 
play, playgrounds and maybe a skate park. I'm, right. I, we need to get our kids moving. Yeah. That's what I feel. I had um, recess three times a day. So I was like morning, <laughs> right after lunch, and right. then another time I was born, 1970. But my, when my daughter went to school, she only had one recess. And I was like, why is that? Yeah. And then they have school homework after school. And I'm like, it's important for kids to get moving. They need to play. They need to play and they should not have homework after school. I'm totally against that. Yeah. So your, your children went through the school system as mm -hmm. well? Yeah. Yes. And, uh, and so... Um, they went through public school. The public school. Yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of changes since uh, since we were kids, and since even mm -hmm. since your daughter was yes. is it a daughter? I yeah, assume. yep, yeah. two daughters. Uh, and uh, a lot of changes, and a lot of parents are very concerned about the way the school system is is changing. Yes. Whether it's bathrooms, and that's a big problem. Mm -hmm. That I mean, boys should be going in the boys' bathroom, girls should be going in the girls' bathroom. Mm -hmm. Period. Um, I don't know how many times I get a request, Senator. What are you going to do about that? Uh, I don't know if we can do anything about it in a private uh, sector unless it's just one bathroom. But as far as the public schools and in, in public areas, uh, I'm a strong believer that uh, you're a biological female. Mm -hmm. You're going to a biological female bathroom. 100%. And, and, and the, the ladies should be safe. Uh, yes. And, and same and, and, and as well as, as the male mm -hmm. uh, bathrooms. If, yes. Uh, you know. If, if you're having a difficulty with one of those, then mm -hmm. maybe we should have one set aside just with a single mm -hmm. stall for you to, to go through. Yeah. But uh, it's time, you know, uh, we, we start looking back and saying, okay, has this gone a little bit too far? Way too far. Yeah. And th that's why I'm really grateful that there's so many amazing candidates that are running for school board in Manchester. Okay. Yeah, yeah. there's a great group. And if you go to um, manchesternh.gov, mm -hmm. Um, Man Man no, Man Manchester, New Hampshire, GOP, I think, talk up. It's the Manchester. GO okay. Oh, ManchesterGOP.com. Oh, my goodness. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, there's a great, a bunch of great candidates mm -hmm. that are really concerned. They're mama bears, fathers that are concerned. Yep. And we just really need to get back to the basics. Yeah. And, and, and we started off a little bit talking about, you know, we're just common people. I, I clean. Oh, I'm you're, a hairdresser. And you're a hairdresser. Small business which owner. Which means it's opened up to anybody. You know, what What are your qualifications? I didn't graduate college. Did you? Um, no. I, mm. I graduated Central in mm. 88, and I went to one semester of college, and I said, Mom, Dad, um, save your money. I'm coming back to do hairdressing. Yeah. And I've been a, a small business owner um, since... 22 years old. It looks like you have a few employees there. Uh, yes, there's about there's about nine of us. Nine of us, and it's yeah. a it's a bushy place or a bougie place. Or, we're pretty chill. Yeah, we're, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's we're chill. We're like your but neighborhood. Like, yeah. um, we we love the sparkle. Yeah, um, but, but we're nice. I think about Cheers, mm -hmm. and we're your neighborhood spa. Everybody yes. knows your name. Exactly. Right? I yes. Yeah. So, exactly. Um, but it, it, it's open, and, and it's like we're, we're just average people. Uh, I got my education really about um, politics by getting appointed to the zoning board, then the planning mm -hmm. board, then serving as a city councilor. Then mm -hmm. I, I learned a little bit as a, as a state rep. And as you go along, you, you learn the process, and what an education. Mm -hmm. You're having doctors and lawyers and, and, and people from all walks of life come in and talk, tell you about a particular matter, mm -hmm. they're educating you. Mm -hmm. You're getting a free education. 100%. Oh, you get $100 a year for that. But, <laughs> but you get a free education, and in that process, you're learning how to help people and how mm -hmm. to connect people to one thing or another. To you know, Are you having a problem with the court system? Are you having a problem with this? Or how can we help you with a zoning issue? Mm -hmm. and, and over time, just by saying, hey, you know what? I'm willing to serve. Mm -hmm. And, and we thank you for doing that. And, and mm -hmm. just for in case you think you're too old, mm -hmm. some people say they're too old. Never too old. I just want to remind everybody that Moses started when he was 80. Really? Yeah. He was 40 years old when he left Egypt. And then there was another 40 years in the desert before mm -hmm. he, he started his ministry. So he's 80 years old mm -hmm. before he got uh, engaged in mm -hmm. uh, rescuing the mm -hmm. uh, entire population of the Hebrew nation. So just so you know, you're not too old. And as a matter of mm -hmm. fact, we need the people with the experience the, and the wisdom. Uh, I need, we need the wisdom of some 90 year olders out I, there. 
right? I totally agree. And that's where I get so much of my education. And mm -hmm. I learn from yeah. so many people that care and they've, you know, they've lived. Yeah. Lived, loved, and served in different ways. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's about stepping up, getting out of our comfort zone and not being afraid. Yeah. So your mom was at St. Peter's Orphanage? She was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my, my mom, my uncle, and my aunt um, went, and then my little, my other aunt, who was a little bit younger, she could, she was too young, but they went, um, my hmm. grandmother had a tragic accident. Um, so they were at the orphanage yeah. for three, um, a while, for the three of them. Oh. Yeah. I, I'm going to write a book about that. I, my stay there for four years. It's, uh, it'll, it'll be coming. It'll, it's, uh, it'll be so for kids so that they can have hope. But uh, it's, uh, it's going to be about my stay. <laughs> Uh, but it's so interesting, and uh, so you're definitely local. And uh, yep. listen, how do people get in touch with you and support your your um, uh, campaign, or, or want to yeah. learn more about it? They can go to cantorformanchester.com. Mm -hmm. Is that <clears> with a C or a K? K K A N T O R mm -hmm. um, for Manchester.com, and I think there's my cell phone on there as well. Um, and if you they can always get find haircut? me at Chill Spa. Okay. Yeah. So, Definitely. and you're still taking in new clients? Yeah. Okay. Here and there. I'm trying to um, balance as much as I can. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for serving and thank you for coming on the show and sharing with us. Oh, well, thank you for inviting me on and thank you for all you're doing. Oh. And, you know, okay. people matter, music matters. And you, thank you, you for everything, for serving. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hey, and listen, uh, if you have a, a story, if you're, if you're a candidate or if you uh, have an issue that you'd like to share, with the public, this really is for you. Uh, this is an opportunity. There's no gotcha questions. This is just uh, about having a conversation. You don't have to like the host, uh, but we'd like you to take advantage of it because really, this is free. It's an opportunity for you to get your voice out there and uh, we'd love to have you. So until next week, thanks for watching. Speaking with the Senator.